you, Lord. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. He's a good God. You can remain standing. Amen. Thank the Lord. Amen. I'd like for Sister Connie to come on up. Thank God. Amen. Get your Bibles out. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hope you're feeling good this morning. Hope you feel as well in your soul as you do in your body, or better in your soul than you do in your body. Amen. <laughs> God has been good to us, praise God. You know, we cannot thank him enough for the blessings that he grants unto us from day to day. When we wake up in the morning, I hear some people say, the alarm clock woke me up, and I'll say to myself, it wasn't that alarm clock. It was God, because without God waking you up, you won't hear the alarm clock. But I love him this morning. I appreciate him. We'll never be able to repay him for the price that he paid for us. Whether you're saved or not, God has been good to you. I want us to let's turn to Psalms 23. We learned this as a child. But I wondered how much did we really absorb it and realize what God is speaking to our hearts and telling us in this chapter. Psalms 23. 23. A lot of children know it by heart. Let's all read together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me besides the still waters. Let me say something here. When the shepherds are leading the sheep, do anyone know why? He takes the sheep to still waters. They don't like running water. They're afraid of it. It has to be still so that they can drink the water without fear. So he was taking care of them just as God takes care of us. So the real sheep of God don't like drama. No, we shouldn't. <laughs> And we should yeah. and we should have fear. Peace. Yes. Joy. Okay, let's start again. Verse three. He restoreth my soul and leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Do you know what this is a saying this here? When we walk in the will of the Lord and allow him to direct our paths, we can dwell with him forever and ever and ever. What a blessed assurance to know that, that one day we will never, ever again have to worry about that old slew foot, the devil, Amen. our enemy. And when I tell somebody sometime when we make it to heaven, just to know that we're going to be out of the reach of the devil, that alone is enough to shout about Brother Frankie. <laughs> to be out of his reach, never, ever again to be tormented by that devil with afflictions or sickness or sorrows or disappointments in this life because life will bring disappointments and sorrows. But when we know the great shepherd, he's able to keep us. Even in the midst of a storm, we can have peace. And I thank God for that. Thank the Lord. Amen. I tell you what, he's a good God. He feels good to be eaten from his pasta. Amen. I tell you what, I, I love to eat. Amen. I reckon y'all can tell. 
Amen. But when it comes to spiritual, I tell you what, it just thrills my soul. Amen. I tell you what, I, I Wednesday night, if you wouldn't hear, what such of a sweet spirit that does come by our way. Yeah. Amen. We had a young man that was in the altar, something I ain't seen in a long time. Amen. Our people just getting in the altar, agonizing with God. I tell you what, he's a young Christian. Yeah. Amen. You, where does young Christian supposed to be when it come to the house of God? Right here. Right here. Seeking and meditating with God. I tell you what, that's where you get your help from. You know what? It does thrill my soul just to be in that altar. Just to try to help. To try to help. To try to be a little vessel for the glory of God. Amen. That's eating from the God's past tonight. That's eating from God's past. Amen. He said we all could have it. Amen. We're going to pray at this time. Maybe all over the church, but up, lifting your hands. Maybe somebody's got outspoken requests. Thank the Lord. Amen. I'd like for everyone to stand. We're going to take up the pastor's offering at this time. Everybody stand. Let's get our mind on the Lord. Amen. It would be good. Amen. If we get our mind on God and has come to worship Him. Amen. You know, God loves it when we worship Him. Thank the Lord.
Amen. You know what? Amen. I, I've been up all night long. Ain't had a bit of rest. Amen. But you know what? When I come to this house, amen, been hurting in my back. Amen. And ain't hardly had no rest all night. Amen. I still come to praise Him. I still come to glorify the Lord. Amen. Through the sickness, through the pain, through the fight. Amen. I tell you what, I'm still here to praise Him. No matter what, amen. I don't want to stop that, amen. We can stop everything else. You can stop everything else. But I don't want to stop my worship with God. Amen. There's some of you, you've been sitting down too long. You've been sitting down too long. Amen. You come in here with the devil on your back. Been sitting down too long. I've been looking at you. Amen. I believe it would be good if you'd get up and praise the Lord. You want to defeat that devil? Get up and praise God. Get up and praise Him. Amen. Amen. I tell you what, I'm going to do my part. I'm going to praise the Lord. Amen. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sing it, sir. Or Jesus. Listen.
Where glory. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Do you love the Lord this morning? Song said we're going to have sunshine and some days it's going to be rain. But it said through the good and through the bad. It's not always all the time going to be mountaintop. But you know, he's God in the good times, bad times. He's a God that don't never change. Amen. We can trust him this morning. Praise the Lord. So good to see each and every one in the house of the Lord this morning. Appreciate the goodness of God. Amen. I tell you, the song says we just need to thank the Lord. We need to thank him this morning. Amen. Bow your heads as we go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you today and thank you that you are a God that's the unchanging God. The same yesterday, today, and forever. We put our trust in you this morning, God. Though we see things are changing all around us. And times, Lord, sometimes look like, Lord, it's bad times. But we have a God that we can trust and serve. Lord, today that'll see us through. We're looking for you this morning, God, just to pass by this church. Lord, and touch souls this morning. Save souls. Touch lives, God. Move in a mighty way this morning. We pray for every Sunday school class today. Those that are special need, Lord, this morning, speak to them. We pray for all of those today, Lord, that desires to be in the house of God, but just not able to be here this morning. I pray you'll touch them in a special way. We give you glory and honor and give you praise. And the church said, Amen and praise the Lord. Just for a moment here this morning, um, I have been approached and somebody asked about a teenage class. And um, of course, we really don't have any extra rooms in the back. Every room is taken up at the time right now, except the nursery. And somebody asked me if we had any babies that are in the nursery. And I said, not that I'm aware of. So we have got a room over there in the nursery that we could form a teenage class. If some of the teenagers would go in the class, I've asked Brother Eric and Sister Rachel if they would be willing to do a teenage class. And uh, they said, let them pray about it. And they've got back up with me and said, if they would be some teenagers that would be interested in going into that class, that they would be glad to take and go into the class and do what they can with the teenage class. How many teenagers do we have here this morning? Stand, if you will, if you're a teenager all over the church, stand. Look, all these teenagers. Would you teenagers agree to go into this class this morning, please? And All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. So this class will be right over here in this corner. Uh, you'll go into that room right there. We'll take some chairs in there, and we'll try to form a teenage class if we can. And if we see that, uh, you know, we need to have a nursery, uh, we'll try to make arrangements somehow or another. We'll, we'll try to fix it somehow. I know God can make a way. Uh, also, the official board this morning, probably for five or ten minutes, it's not going to take us long at all, but there are a couple of business items I need to speak to you about this morning as we take into the Sunday school. So as soon as we take into Sunday school, if the board will meet in the class or in the office over here, and uh, we'll meet for just a few moments, it won't take me long, and then we'll dismiss you right back to your Sunday school classes. So. God bless you. Uh, let's get everybody a big hand for being in church this morning. We'll be dismissed to our classes at this time. We're going to take up Sunday school tithes and offerings at this time.
Good morning. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord for what we already felt this morning. He is so good. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Can't think of nowhere else just out of heaven. I'd rather be this morning than right where I'm at in Mount Zion. Praise God. <clears throat> well, my brothers and sisters. We had a good week. The Lord blessed us in a mighty way. I had a thought. We serve a super God, praise God. He's blessed us, praise God, in a mighty and a super way this week. We have a few more chairs in here for any teenagers that's not on board. A few more chairs. If you got any more teenagers wants to come. Praise the Lord. Good to have our visitors with us. Brother Stoney, your grand your grandsons. Favor you, brother. Praise the Lord. I was trying to think of a word to say, but you can tell her bells. Praise God. <clears throat> Lesson number eight. And I cordially book, and if you don't have a quarterly book and want to read with us, be Acts chapter 4, start with verse 23. Praise the Lord. You know, there's a saying that song a while ago, and uh, now that's a wonderful song. They sang some anointed songs here, Brother Laverne, praise the Lord. Some anointed songs, brother. Meaning to it. <clears throat> And I just felt kind of religious for you know it as soon as they started singing it, brother. That good, humble spirit, praise God, that she was singing. I just praise God for it. You know, every, every, you don't feel that every day where I come from. Right. Praise the Lord. Oh, Satan, he follows me out that door right now, sister. But when I'm in here, praise God, it's like a refuge right here. Shield under the time of storm. Glory to God. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you out set out to do good and your purpose is to do good and your mind made up to do good, he's a following you. He's on your trail, brother, trying to trip you up. Praise the Lord. Brother Travis, appreciate you and love you, brother. Good to see you. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> he might, brother brother Ronnie Cummins, he ain't here, but he, he said uh, he might knock me down. But he, he, Hey, brother Ronnie, go ahead and tell brother Travis he not, might knock you down, but what? It won't knock you out. Praise the Lord. Your brother Ronnie say that a many a time. Praise God. <clears throat> he can't keep you down either. He might knock you down, but he can't keep you down. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> We're talking about a Holy Ghost earthquake here. The Lord will help us. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> the theme says, <clears throat> examining the early church's character will show us the type of people which God gives a powerful move of the Holy Ghost. Let us become that church. Ain't that what we want to be, church? Praise the Lord. We'd like for our character to shine in this dark world we're living in, Brother Claudia. And, um, you know, we need just be separate. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When he said you was a chosen generation and a royal priesthood, a peculiar people, that's just what that's what he meant. He said what he meant, meant what he said. Praise the Lord. I believe that's Peter right in Peter's writing. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> but um the writer says examining the early church's character. And then people there's people say, Oh, that was back in the old times and we we're living in a different time now well god's the same god and he wants us to line right up with this right here this is our this is our road map church <clears throat> i can't get more <clears throat> voice right this morning praise the lord hallelujah 
Somebody praise the Lord. The golden text says, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all, not part of them, all of them. Because you know why? There was all in one accord, all in one mind. Great grace. Praise the Lord. That grace is, that's Acts 4 and 33. That grace is still real today, church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I come some newlyweds in there. You come in here, y'all. Just got married. Praise the Lord. Let's read. Read with me. I try to sometimes I just try to try to say something like this. Let's clear our mind. We had a blessed week, and I don't no doubt about it. And me and my wife in the last minute last night went and eat and fellowship. It was just really good to me and her. And it was wonderful, praise God. And then we went over to Germany and Kim's family is a while. I hadn't been over there in how long and had a good time over there with my grandbabies and stuff. And Kim's a special, she's a special daughter in law, you know what I'm saying? And Jeremy's a special son, praise God. He's the most special son of God, praise God. And we just had a good time. But I want to clear my mind right now. This is God's God's place and God's work. And, you know, we want to please the Lord, don't we? Amen. We want to please the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And being let go, what he's saying right here, let go. Last week we studied and learned about the apostles being persecuted after the 3,000 was saved. And then there's on the way to the temple. And here's the lame man at the gate called Beautiful. And, they, you know, Peter and John was walking together. And they said, look on us. And he came up leaping, you know, and, and, and the rest of the story, how they've been persecuted ever since. For doing a good deed, a good deed for doing it, and and not taking no credit, but giving Jesus all the credit. That's that's the name. That's the name that we we serving, and everything we do in the name of Jesus. Praise God, sister. Um, um, says it's all about Jesus. Praise the Lord. Verse twenty three says, and being let go after they had counseled them and warned them and threatened them, they went to their own company. And reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. In other words, all the Christians, they got together. And the apostles and, and the ones that, that grouped up their own company, a company of them. And when they had heard that, they lifted up their voice. So listen to what they said. They didn't get down in the dungeon there and everything and uh, just get all all down and, and, and rebellious or whatever. Decided to go ahead and turn around. And go back and get scared off and tuck tail run. That ain't what they done, praise God. It said when when they heard this, they lifted up their voice to God, church, with one accord. After being whipped and threatened, and you don't teach no more and preach no more. In this name, they lifted up their God with one accord, their voice to God, and said, Lord, listen what they prayed. This is important. Thou art God. You know, when we pray sometime, Brother Bill, I believe the Lord wants us to just recognize him and realize him for what he is and who he is, praise God. The great God that created heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is. That's what he said. Praise the Lord. And I believe that's what God, he just don't want us to pray, you know, like we're just praying a, a standard prayer or something, you know. He wants us to visualize him being in the closet right there with you. By faith. He wants us to know that he hears our prayers. Praise the Lord. He wants us by faith when we fall on these old rugged knees, Sister Naomi, to believe that he's hearing our prayer. Praise the Lord. So this group right here, this company says, there was on one accord, says, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David has says, why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? And what they're doing, they're quoting Psalms, a verse in Psalms, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. The, if the Lord helps. The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. The patriarch of David had already prophesied this day right here what had happened. What had happened. David had prophesied in rotten, praise the Lord. The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth, listen to this prayer. 
For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both her and Pilate, Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together for to do whatsoever thy hand thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings <laughs> and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done. Now that's the reason, okay? They prayed and asked God for something. Now that verse there is giving him the reason, okay? When we pray and, and seek God for things, said, so now Lord, if you will do this for me, here's the reason I'm asking. I'll do this for you. Here's what I want to do, Lord. Here's my plan. You're in the midst of it all, Lord. Huh? When you pray and you believe, and then you say, Lord, if you'll do this for me, you know, you, you say, Frankie, I thought you were just talking about making oaths in there. What, what, God wants us to make an oath, huh? but if he's going to get the glory out of it. That's what I'm trying to say. It says right here, by stretching forth thine hand to heal, you know, if you'll just give us this boldness, protect us. You know, you heard their threatenings, Lord, and you heard, praise the Lord, just grant unto us, thy servants, that with all boldness they may speak thy word. Praise the Lord. They're praying one for another, lifting up their... Can you imagine this, church? Can you just, just in the spirit, imagine this group of Christians after that the Lord had been risen from the dead, praise the Lord, and they, God gave them the Holy Ghost and come out of the upper room and they're doing all these wonderful miracles and everything in the name of Jesus, just throwing by his name, you know, and they're standing up, you know. It says, but if you will just grant us boldness by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, listen what happened. The place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. You know what? There is evidence when you pray. You can see evidence when you lose your keys, and you pray for how long, sister? Martha, a week, two weeks. Hadn't lost her set of keys for two weeks, and she testified him Wednesday night and fired us up. Praise the Lord. How did God spoke to her after waiting? She didn't give up now. She didn't go have a new set of keys made, Brother Fred. Huh? She could have just went on down yonder and spent a couple of dollars, had a new new set of keys made. I'm getting over here where I can see her. But she prayed earnestly. That just lines right up right here. God, if you will help me find my keys, I'll tell my son Sunday morning. <laughs> praise the Lord. If you will do this, I'll do that for you, God. I'll glorify you and give you all praise. My son had a two-step mother. How a self-made wouldn't even fit. How about that? God was in that too, sister. He was in that machine. Now, that thing, that's like a computer. Now, it makes that key now. But God got in and he said, I, I know what she's going to do. I know she's going to do on on uh, October the 23rd around 10 o'clock that morning. I know what she's going to be doing, glorify me. So this this machine right here, I'm going to just put a little bug in this machine this morning. Hey, hey, don't you know God can do that? Huh? So that key didn't work. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody give God the praise. <laughs> That's evidence that God is still real. He's still a super God. He's still my Lord and my King. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That testimony right there. Praise the Lord. But anyway, these, these apostles, they prayed and they got Brother Larry. Brother, let's give Brother Larry and his new bride a hand, y'all. <laughs> did y'all know he snuck right in here? And uh, did, did y'all know they're new, newlyweds? Just a few hours ago, I heard it. They were newlyweds, just got married. Praise the Let's give him another hand. <laughs> Brother Larry, I know your name pretty good, but what's her name one more time, brother? Dale. Sister Dale. Good to have you. I just, I just smiling face. Good to have you on the smiling face. Let's praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. The last verse right here was 33. If you're reading your Bible, it goes from 31 and skips to 33. It says, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. You know, there's power in that resurrection. There's power in the blood of Jesus, but there's power in the resurrection too. Hallelujah. It says, and great grace was upon them all. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's read the introduction. We're talking about earthquakes. See, I don't know what it's like to feel an earthquake. I heard a few years ago they had a pretty, pretty, pretty good earthquake right here in South Carolina next to us. But you know, there's places like in Japan and all they build houses. So they they talk. They had so many earthquakes to build houses on rubber or, 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 or twistable, flexible ball joints, like on on a car. You know, where the house you know sits there on that foundation and on the piers and concrete and all, it, it flexes like this. But um, if God's in it, that ain't going to help neither. Not when the earth opens up to where a car can fall in or something else in the middle of that house sitting there. But anyway, you know, it's just wisdom and, and technology that God gave man. Put it like that. Earthquakes are powerful forces of nature that bring down buildings and change the world, at least for a moment. Amen? I'd agree with that. In other words, when he said bring down buildings, that's just, they tear them down. Earthquakes. They are destructive. And rarely is there any good thing that comes from them. Most people fear an earthquake. All right, listen to this. A Holy Ghost earthquake is constructive. Okay? Okay. When it's destructive, it destroys. But when it's constructive, it builds. Praise the Lord. Huh? And builds up a powerful church. Builds churches and tears down strongholds of the devil. Hallelujah. Praise God. Somebody praise the Lord. Huh? You talk about an earthquake. Praise God. When they come out of that upper room. And then if you go on down and ask it, it won't be long. Too many more chapters. They're going to be in prison and there's an earthquake going to come when they was whipped and everything and beat and bloodied up old Brother Richard. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. And, uh, and that, that was in the inner prison. Praise the Lord. And an earthquake came and all the prison doors opened. How about that? Every door was open. And the keeper of the prison sounded like he was asleep. And when he woke up and seen what had happened, fixing the committee's uh, commit suicide, take his own life. But Apostle Paul says, do thyself no harm, we're all safe. Something like that. And you know, and he ended up getting saved, Sister Crystal. This, this keeper ended up going down. Him and his household. God saved, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But this earthquake right here, this Holy Ghost earthquake, tears down strongholds of that devil. Sister Connie was talking about this morning. God grants this world changing force yes. to be manifested in certain Christians of high character. Today's lesson shows the character of the early church and that great revival that came through the outpouring of the Spirit. Truly, this event changed many lives, not for a moment, but for eternity. If our churches would become like the early church, God would show his might again. We need to hold on to our standards and we need to hold firm. Praise the Lord. Just press our way, church. He's soon coming. We better not slack up. Huh? And it's it's not it is it is not the first one that crosses the the uh finish line, but it's it just we just got to finish. Praise the Lord. It ain't to the swift, brother Laverne. You, you, we just got to hold on and, and, you know, like the like the turtle, you know, and that hare, that rabbit, he kept running around and messing around and messing around and 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 lingering like Lot did coming out of coming out of Sodom and Gomorrah, but that turtle beat him across the line, didn't he? Huh? Yeah. The, one of the slowest animals, about like a snail, but he's a moving. And he's steady, kept. That's all it takes, just spiritually, in our spiritual life. Just keep on oppressing, praise the Lord. Keep moving, praise God. He's soon coming. We'll finish this race, praise the Lord. It says right here in our lesson, we learned about the apostles being 
uh, persecuted and everything the last few weeks. Now they're released from prison after being threatened and went back to the, to the Christians that were dwelling at Jerusalem. While we're, listen, while we are looking forward to studying the great outpouring of the Holy Ghost, we must understand that God blesses certain character traits that are found in these men of God. Read with me. Verse 23 here says, And being let go in your quarterly book, look at the character traits of the apostles after they're released. And it's listed here like three traits. After the threats given to them, they did not shy away from their people. At one time, Peter was ashamed of Christ and the disciples. But now, at one time is ashamed. But now, at one time he denied the Lord. And lied and cursed and swore. I don't know the man. Remember that? And then, you know, but now he was very bold to testify of Christ and be in union with the church. They had to be with those that they were like. They had to be with those that they were like. You know, I might have mentioned it before one time, and I used Brother Richard David Davis. My brother-in-law there. I said if Brother Richard was a a bank robber and he's bad for robbing banks and somebody seen me with him, I'm a bank robber too. Man. Well, it says right here that they were they had to be with those that they were like, huh? You got to be with people that is of God if you're godly, because if you hang around the wrong spirits and stuff, it's liable to drag you down. People with the bad spirits love to drag you down, get you discouraged, hmm? blowing that smoke in your face and stuff like that. This one woman, she done it for the pure booger man uh, I was working for, was doing a big job for the government, and she smoked and drank, and she'd get right in my face and smoke and blow it right in my face, and I'd just walk away. If she'd be talking to me, I'd just walk away, I'd, just, I'd go outside or something. She done it for the booger man uh, Brother Claudia. Uh huh? Praise the Lord. But I still sweet to her. And I still good to her. Done, done extra work for her. Praise the Lord. God help me do that. God help me do that. Praise the Lord. Number two, they went to the church when it was dangerous. How about that? Get ready now. Don't fall out with me. Don't get all upset with me. But it says some can't come to church when everything's comfortable. Boy, when I read that, it's like a dagger in my heart. You know, sometimes it was 100 degrees and 95 degrees on Wednesday evenings and Wednesday nights. We'd be coming to church. If you were to come here and the power was off and them windows there, you can't rise them. Huh? And it had been 100 degrees in here all day long. How many of us would have just decided to go ahead and, uh, and pray and worship? Huh? Maybe we'd have prayed and worshiped and maybe would have stayed here. But our mind would have been, a, what in the world? I, I just can't get my mind on praying. I can't get my mind on God. I wish this air condition would come over. I mean, we're so spoiled, church. I thought about the little church down yonder, White Lake. Landmark. Had them one by six benches, Sister Alice. When you walked through the doors right yonder, it was old-timey wood doors, buddy. They squeaked the first time I ever went there. I remember this. When I come in them doors. Hadn't been long, just got saved. That was the first church I went and carried my guitar to after I got saved. I got back in church and made a 29th, 1999, like two weeks later. Charlene told me about the church and everything and knew these people, good people. Hey, walked through that door and them old-timey Doors was a squeaking like out in the sound like a ghost house. Huh? It was. It was a Holy Ghost house, praise the Lord. And went on in there. The floors was a squeaking. Old wood floors. The benches was one by sixes, brother Laverne. Old timey benches, brother, one by six. They was a squeaking, huh? But now let me tell you, directly I heard somebody back yonder praying like these sisters be praying back in. I heard a woman a praying. I said, Now who in the world is that? Well, boy, now she was she was praying. She prayed. So when she prayed, she come on out and she sat down on this old piano. And I hadn't even tuned my guitar, brother, brother Bill. But my guitar was 
perfectly in tune with that old piano, brother. I was worried about it not being in tune. I didn't have to turn a key, praise God. But it was Sister Claudia Moat. That's who it was, Sister Claudia Moat. Praise God. But now that old church right there had the power, praise God. Huh? So we, got, we can get too comfortable, Jim. We can get too relaxed and we'll forget about God's real reason that we come to church, praise God. We'll forget. Now, I don't, don't get me wrong. I love my church. I love these padded pews. I love this beautiful carpet and everything. Look at this fine music up here. I love all this. But that's not the reason we come to church now. We come to church to worship God. Brother Chris was talking a while ago about up yonder in Guatemala. Praise God when you have to walk up the mountain of mile or something. Other can't get vehicles up there. They got to ride on a donkey or walk. Huh? Sister Chris knows what I'm talking about. She's been over there. But what I'm seeing is when they got there, they knew what they was going to get. They knew what they was going to be feeling when they got down there. Sister. Huh? They knew the reason, praise God, they was going up the hill, praise God. Well, we just need to get our mind on God and praise him and thank him for our blessings. That's all I'm trying to say. Don't take it for granted. We need to really praise him and thank him for our blessings. Uh, air conditions and heating and everything. It's 20 degrees up to 15 degrees out there. We're walking here. It's just so comfortable. Man, and we got it made. Somebody say Amen. Praise the Lord. It says right here, some can't come to church. Some cannot come to church when everything's comfortable. Peter and John would go to church under threats. Threatened to be whipped. If you show up down here at Mount Zion, I'm going to whip you, buddy. You show up down here at Mount Zion Wednesday night, I'm going to hang you out there. I'm going to put a whipping on you. huh? If the government would tell you that. We're going to still come. We better. We better still come. We better have our mind made up to come. I mean, it, it is what it is. This shows a lot about their dedication to Christ. If we're dedicated, we're going to come. If we're dedicated, we're going to be here. Okay? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If someone doesn't love church, if they don't love church, they have fallen in love. Huh? They haven't fallen in love with Christ. If you fell in love with Jesus and you love him more than anything, you love church. Praise the Lord. Don't look for reasons to miss church. Praise the Lord. Verse number three right here, or the third reason here. It says, these disciples were surrendered to suffering for Christ's sake. If them padded pews cause up till bone to ache and all, but still the power of God would come. You'd forget about all that. Huh? No arm rest on the end. You'd forget about all that. Do what, I like to just sit right on where my daughter and my wife sit and just lean on that on that arm rest. That arm rest right on. It's like that thing is made for the way of my arm. I'd just be so comfortable. I'm talking about Frankie Denver now. I'd just be so relaxed. You know? But God he, he better be first in my mind. He better be first up there. What I'm dwelling on, the reason I'm here, praise the Lord. Huh? Don't just come to relax and rest and whatever. Get out the house. Praise the Lord. Come to worship. The Lord wants us to worship him, church. Praise the Lord. All right, the prayerful res their, their response. Remember we talked about a while ago, the reason we pray. And then we look for, for um, um, benefits of prayer. Benefits, rewards. The Lord will reward you according to your righteousness, according to the cleanness of your hands. Praise the Lord. It is always important how one responds to a crisis. You know, that's a time of trouble. A thing just ain't all kind of mess going on like we're in a crisis right now in America. huh? And this response, the character of the church is on full displays. You know, the world's looking at us how we're going to handle this mess, this economy and everything now, right, brother? Huh? People, I ask you certain things. I said, I, they're talking about diesel fuel. I got two diesel trucks. Praise the Lord for me. He gave them for me for my business. Praise the Lord. And I got another old red truck. Something with 500,000 miles on it. The Lord gave me that. And when it was, I had four miles on it. May the 28th, I believe, or April 28th, 1997, Brother Richard. And it's something to have 500,000. That's a half a million miles, okay? God did that. God did that. But somebody say, man, how can you afford that? Five dollar and fifty cent diesel fuel, huh? How 
can you afford that high price diesel fuel? Don't you wish you had your gasoline truck? I said, well, I got a gasoline truck. I said, but if I do God's will, and when I pull up my trailer in that, that house down yonder, of who it is, and them center people need to hear about the sweet Jesus, need to hear about salvation, if gas goes to $20 a gallon, he'll make a way for me to buy it. Praise the Lord. Now, somebody say amen. And I mean that. Now, if the gas goes to $20 a gallon, I hope and pray it comes from five right now back to two fifty. dollars huh? I wish it would come back to two fifty dollars tomorrow. Praise the Lord. Huh? Praise the Lord. Hey, a few weeks ago, it was $4.39 diesel fuel. I told my wife, I said, get ready. It's fixing to go back to five. Her name ain't going to tell her what, what it might do. I told, I told her two weeks ago, three weeks ago, didn't the baby? The, the few days, as soon as that hurricane done all that damage, that guy dropped to $4.39. I believe the cheapest I had found diesel fuel. I said, get ready, baby. She's fixing to shoot back up. Get ready. Then I'm baby. Praise the Lord. But listen to what he says right here. How did they need? It said, it says, the character of the church is on full display. They're watching us. How did they react to the seeming bad news? How did they react? What did they do? They prayed. That's the key. Pray. What great things this prayer reveals about how we should pray and what should issue forth from our mouths. What should issue come out of these mouths praying out of the abundance of our hearts? Huh? Praise the Lord. Out of think about what he said. What should come for praise? Thanks. God, I thank I'm being whipped, Lord, but thank you, God. I ain't I, I ain't crippled. I can still praise you. Thank you, God. I ain't lost my voice. Did you hear Sister Rachel up here this morning to sing that song? And I thought about her voice was gone that time. She had that had that surgery and all and she was so worried about her voice. Did you hear that? You're not anointing, huh? They prayed. What great things this prayer reveals about how we should pray and what should issue forth out of our mouths and out of our voices for the glory of God. Huh? That's what he's saying. They lifted up their voice to God in unity. In unity. When the church is united in its desire and faith, they will be able to pray a powerful manner. Huh? Pray in a, a powerful manner. How about that? It is possible that the Holy Ghost came and caused the whole congregation to pray at the same time. And the Holy Ghost can do that. God can do mir miraculous when you're on one accord. He can do anything, praise the Lord. He, called, he sent this earthquake, didn't he? Huh? This would point... To the fact that they were in harmony and moving of the Spirit of God also. Right, listen, Satan fights the unity of the church greatly because he knows the danger that a congregation poses in his plans when they're all in one accord in one mind. How about that? He knows. Oh, man, I got to do something down at Mount Zion. They're getting too close together now. They're too much love in that church. I got to do something. Huh? They could come up with all kinds of little schemes to try to cripple us, church. But we got to just keep on pressing, keep on praying. Praise the Lord. Keep on keeping on. Praise the Lord. Huh? Because old Satan hates you. You hear me? But I hate him too. They address God as the sovereign ruler of all. How about that? That means when they started praying, they said, God, oh God, we praise you and we love you, Lord, because you made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is. And we're coming to you, God, because you are such a great God. You are all, almighty God. There's no other God besides you, Lord. They, they started praying something like that. Do you ever pray like that when you're in the closet? Say, God. I know you hear me, Lord. I know you see my need. Before. I, yesterday, dear Lord, I was thinking about it. You knew what I was going to pray about today. Praise the Lord. You ever tell him things like that? Huh? Because he's such a great God. He knows our thoughts are far off. And you need to learn to just pray like that and give him the praise because he is God. Praise the Lord. There's no other God up yonder, over yonder, down yonder that knows your thoughts are far off, church. Huh? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord. It says right here, their praise of God showed that they were more conscious of the, of the authority of God over their lives than they were the authority of them to want to whip them again. Huh? That's what he's trying to say. Huh? God controls the whip. Huh? He said, if, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men. 
Not early lifting him up. Already 3,000 got saved and maybe 2,000, about 5,000 got saved and I don't know how many more, but uh, it, it, that was lifting him up. That's what we're going to do. That's what he called us to do, lift him up. Uh, praise the Lord. Worship came from their hearts before they presented their problem. Uh, they worshiped him and praised him and then they said, God, give us this. And then if you do God, this is what you, you want to be glorified. <laughs> this is what you're going to get re re reward on. And, and uh, you know, it ain't like making, it's, it's kin to making an oath. God wants us to be uh, committed to him. He wants us to commit our life to him. Huh? Commit our ways to him. Huh? It's okay if you want to make an oath, uh, but you know you're able to keep that oath. Praise the Lord. Don't make it in doubt. Or you might be just... Yeah, just opening that little gap there for Satan. Oh, smutty face to come on in and defeat you. Hmm? God wants you to make oaths and be truthful about it from your heart. And he'll help you to keep that oath. Hallelujah. They appealed to this further by recognizing how powerful in his creative work. God is above all people because he is the rightful ruler of all that that is. Since he made everything. He made the earth and the sea and everything. And man, praise the Lord, he knows our money. He created us and made. He engineered you, buddy. Pray the Lord. They prayed the word of God. Listen, the congregation prayed for Psalms. That was, that was chapter 2. I'll tell you about a while ago. That shows the opposition of the Gentile nations against Christ. This began at the crucifixion of our Lord. And will culminate when the Antichrist will rise up against Jesus in the last days. He had already prophesied it. David, praise the Lord. In chapter 2, you can read that now and study that. Coupling prayer with God's word is powerful. It will inspire faith in the one who prays and God wants to use he, he wants us to use his word when we pray. Quote scriptures in your closet is what he's saying. Quote scriptures. God, St. John 15 and 7 says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Huh? Quoting scriptures like that right there. But it's, it's, it's got a, a price to pay there at the first. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, then it'll happen. Don't, don't be asking if it don't. Huh? If you don't abide in him and his word don't abide in you, don't, don't pray for all of that. But if you know you're walking, praise God. Brother Bell said one, he says, I wasn't walking hand in hand with the Lord back in them days. And he's telling me about his experience. Something happened to him. I like that the way Brother Bell put that. He wasn't walking hand in hand with the Lord at that time. 50 years ago, this happened, he's telling me. So, so, so if we, now if we got faith that we're living a life that's almost pleasing to the Lord. Say, Lord, your word says in chapter 15, Verse 7 of St. John. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, Lord, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you, Lord. Now that's a promise to me, God. And Lord, you know I abide in you. You know your words abide in me, Lord. That, that, that's what he wants us to do right there. Huh? Huh? Is that like making an oath? Huh? That's just, it ain't, uh, it ain't, uh, it, 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 it's just knowing that God's able, brother. God is able, brother Andrew. If, it, if anything happens, it's on our part. It won't be God. It'll be on our part. We're coming up short. We're coming up short somewhere. Praise the Lord. Somebody praise God. All right. The reason we know this, many examples, that his word supplies us with that show people praying in this manner. They found answers for their problems through God's word. While this was the first persecution of the church, after the resurrection, these Christians were not surprised for they knew God's word had already told them. It already had told them, praise God, that it's, it's going to happen. And Jesus had already told them, said, they hate you, they hate me, they're going to hate you. Huh? You're not of the world, they hate and love their own. Jesus taught them these things, praise the Lord. And you know, it's like they probably forgot a lot of stuff while Jesus was walking with them. While Jesus was doing all these miraculous things. But buddy, after he rose from the dead and they went to the upper room and come down, huh? They remember the Holy Ghost brought all that to their remembrance. 
refreshed all that for them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It says right here, since it did not take God by surprise, and nothing does, they knew he had everything under control. They knew that the next time they was going to get whipped, it was already ordained and God was going to control it and bring them on out of it and heal their wounds and the stripes and whatever. Huh? I believe the guard even doctored their wounds one time. Huh? Praise the Lord. Their prayerful, their prayerful use of God's word was a comfort to them and a praise to the God who prophesied about these things coming to pass. Praise the Lord. You know what? When you pray, and you pray, and you pray, and you pray, and then finally, God comes on the scene. It's like you go, come that close to giving up. You come that close to not praying about it no more. And God comes on the scene. Oh, man. That's so good. Go ahead. Y'all anointed me, and it's doing so good. It ain't healed, but I still feel, you know, I still feel my back. Something in my back ain't right. But I know one thing. It's a way better than it was, Brady. One time I was walking like that right there, you know, hump back. Praise the Lord. But God has really touched my back, and I'm waiting on him to finish healing it. Sometimes your healing don't come just like that. You got to wait on it. Praise the Lord. He's the same healer to David. He was right here. That lame man was sitting there at that... That beautiful gate, praise the Lord. It's the same God that I serve right now, praise God. I'm waiting. But now, sometimes we bring things on ourselves, and I really suffered. And I, what I was doing, I was picking up these big treated eight-foot poles, six-by-six six treated, when they were just like they had just been come out of the vet, you know, soaking wet, brother. And they're, they're pretty heavy. And I'm uh, putting them up on this porch this tall. And, and you know, there's Adam. He could have got down to help, but I didn't want to ask Adam to help me, you know. I don't want to slow him. Just hard headed, and God's whipping me for it. Okay, we we'll be whipped when we when we hard headed. Charlene, she whipped me ever since. Praise the Lord. But anyway, this has been good. I believe that was the second bill. 
We had about three hours or four hours, boy, we could really get into this. You know, this place was shaken. When they prayed, it, it just shook the place, praise the Lord. Hey, got everybody's attention, huh? Praise the Lord. So there's power in prayer, amen? I want to read this right quick. Give me another few minutes. Listen to what it says I am. And the illustrations, if, it's, if you want to read that. Philip Brooks said this right here. Do not pray for easy lives. Listen now, listen. Don't no, no, turn it out, listen. Do not pray for easy lives. Pray to be stronger, men and women. Okay, it's a good thought, right? Do not pray for tasks equal to your powers. Pray for powers equal to your tasks. Amen. Somebody give God the praise. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I appreciate y'all. I love you. I want to make it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Bring them again. I zone up. All right, we'd like to say once again, good morning to everybody. So good to see you in the Lord's house this morning. And uh, we would like to recognize Brother Larry and Sister Dale. They had a wonderful, wonderful occasion that took place yesterday. And I was privileged to officiate their wedding ceremonies. I, if you will stand, brother and sister, and let's give them a big round of applause this morning. We just welcome y'all to Mount Zion. So good to have you, buddy. Yes, sir. Love you too, brother. Thank God. Uh, we'd like to say uh, this morning that we are working on uh, getting the arrangements on some uh, Thanksgiving boxes that they'll be giving out here at the church like they did last year. And we'll make that announcement and uh, tell you exactly what day and what time to be here to pick up your box. And uh, so we're going to do that again this year. I'll be preaching revival this week uh, out of Dunn, North Carolina, a place called Coates, North Carolina, for Brother Floyd Moore, starting tomorrow night, going through Friday night. And I'm going to drive the bus 
on Thursday night and Friday night of this week, leaving here at 6.15 in order to get there by 7.30. So if there's anybody here that would like to ride on the bus and go with us to Revival to Brother Floyd Moore's, uh, either Thursday night or Friday night, the bus will be going. So we invite you to come and go with us uh, this week. I know he preached for us during our revival, and if you remember him mentioning about Mount Zion loading the bus up and bringing some of the folks there. So if you can come, we appreciate that. Um, this year we're going to be having homecoming November the 13th here at the church, and there will be a lot of food prepared. Uh, we're asking all the ladies that you like you would normally do, uh, just bring whatever you want to. We we just you would just in whatever you want to bring. There's no set thing for you to bring. Uh, we eat collards and we eat turnips. And uh, if you want to bring some deer meat, some of them will eat deer and. I think Sister Alice likes coon, so if you want to bring some coon, that would be fine. <laughs> uh, there's different things. Anything you want to bring, it's open open for anything you want to bring. It will be fine. And uh, I think the church will be. Brother Johnson, you still cooking coon? Yes, sir. All right. He might have some, Sister Alice, if he brings it. All right. So uh, let's look forward to homecoming service. It'll be November the 13th, and we invite everybody to come be with us during that day. Let's see how many people we can get to come homecoming. Lord, if Brother Artemis Cummins, all of his people would just come, the church wouldn't set them all. So homecoming service, we like to have a good crowd here that day. And uh, Okay, Brother Ray's putting in his order. <laughs> Banana pudding, okay. All right, so I think tonight's going to be a special night, uh, it'll be youth service night, and uh, so the service won't be held here at church. It'll be over at the youth center tonight, so there won't be any services held here, but Brother Eric will come tonight and give you uh, what's going on tonight at the youth center. So ask Brother Eric, if you will, brother, to step up here and just... He's correct. The service will be at the youth center. Uh, we'll need to meet about 6 p.m. to practice, of course. All the young people, please be there at 6 p.m. so we can uh, rehearse through our songs. And we'll have Sister Rose Wilkins from over at St. Paul's Holiness Church. She'll be bringing the word tonight. And we look for everyone to be there. That's at 7, correct? Yeah, 7 o'clock. Yeah, we start church at 7. That's right. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> That'll be regular service tonight there at the youth center at 7 o'clock. And the wife, last night, she cooked three big, huge pots of vegetable soup. Big, three big ones. And they're going to have um, they're gonna have peanut butter and jelly sandwiches after. So we want everybody, these young people... Uh, I think they deserve your support. So if you can come tonight, be there. Sister Rose Wilkins will be preaching tonight to the young people tonight at 7 o'clock. Come and be there at the youth center tonight. Uh, as far as we know, uh, we wished it would have been done before, but it will be done Monday. Monday they're going to go in on that road to the youth center, and it's going to be completely redone all the way through to the building. Uh, they're going to be going, uh, doing asphalt, and it's go you're not going to be hitting no potholes no more. So it's going to be fixed like it ought to be going into the youth center on the on the road. But uh, if you will, just endure that one more night and come out and be with us at the youth center tonight. I'll turn it back over to Brother Chris. We're going into our worship service at this time. Like first thing is come on to the choir.
God come this morning. We'll try to sing a special song. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We'll try this old song here this morning. I'm gonna rest beside the river where the shadows never fall and the dark clouds never hide the light of day. I was a mama's boy. I would like to talk with mother about the happy days of old. But time will never let me linger on. I see her days are swiftly passing. Tomorrow she may be gone. But we're going to talk beside.
this first verse. I'm gonna rest beside the river where the shadows never fall. The dark clouds never hide the light of day. Where the Lamb will light the city and the evening never comes, I'm gonna rest beside the river just for a day. Just for a day. The day will last forever. And the dark. As I look over the congregation this morning, I see some of our elders, and I love our elders this morning. I see some of them, it won't be long, and they're going to take their rest, amen, beside the river. Hallelujah. And I was just thinking this morning, what a day that's going to be. Hallelujah. Thank God. Yes, my brother. Obey the Lord, Brother Johnson. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. Obey the Lord. And would you remain standing, Brother Johnson? Just lift your hand toward Brother Johnson. Glenn Locklear, Pinehurst Hospital with cancer. Mary Helen's brother. Let that the Lord to touch him right now. Heavenly Father, we're making a special prayer. Mr. Glenn, this morning, God, in that hospital with cancer. Lift him up right now, God. Asking for a touch of heaven upon his body. Lord, we pray for Sister Doris this morning. Touch Brother Johnson and his wife. Minister to them today in Jesus' name. Amen and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the book of St. Mark this morning, turn with us in the 8th chapter. Praise God. 8th chapter. Familiar scripture that I felt led this morning to bring to us today. Uh, out of the Word of God, uh, we'd like to read in the 8th chapter, if you find it and you're able to honor the Word by standing, please. Uh, we'll look together now in verses number 22, 8th chapter of St. Mark, verse 22. And he cometh to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man unto him, and besought him, to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. When he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hand again upon his eyes and made him look up. And he saw and, and he was restored 
and saw every man clearly. And he went and he sent him away to his house saying, Neither go into the town nor tell it any more, any in the town. Amen. Ask the blessings of the Lord upon the reading this morning. Hallelujah. In our reading here this morning, we find the Bible says that in Bethsaida, they bring unto him a man that was a blind man. And they was asking Jesus if he would touch this blind man. He was needing a healing from the Lord. Praise God. And we read this story here this morning. And we find that Jesus does exactly what they have requested for him to do. And he took this blind man to Bible City, put spit upon his eyes, and they put his hands upon him and asked him, did he see aught? And the Bible said he looked up. And I want you to notice this this morning. This man made a confession unto the Lord Jesus. Now he could have, I want you to notice in these scriptures, he looked up and he said unto the Lord, I see men as trees walking. Now before I don't believe he even saw or could have even saw men as trees walking, he was completely blind. And you know I'm sure that that was a very great miracle that this man was experiencing when he looked. And Jesus said, what do you see? He said, I see men as trees. He made a confession unto the Lord. And I thought, Brother Frankie, he could have just said, well, Lord, I thank you. You've done something for me. Amen. You've done a great thing. I, I, I can see where I, I couldn't see before, but I can see. Amen. But you know, he didn't, he didn't stop there. He made a confession unto the Lord. And he said, Lord... I, I can see, but I see men as trees. Amen. And the next thing we find that the Bible says after that he put his hands upon him again and he touched this man once more and he made him look up and the Bible said he was restored and he saw every man clearly. Praise the Lord. I won't preach to us this morning on God can clear it up. Amen. Praise the Lord. He saw every man clearly. Hallelujah. Thank God. You know, I don't believe this morning that it was God's will for this man to just partly see. I don't believe it was just God's will for this man to see men as trees. Every man is supposed to look like man. He's not supposed to look like trees. Come on, and God, amen, was not, I don't believe God was pleased, amen, with him just half seeing. God, amen, wanted this man to be totally delivered from his blindness and him to be totally made whole. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to tell us tonight, thank God this morning, amen, some folks are not fully delivered and they can clearly see because they're not confessing. Now I know I'm going to take my time right here just a little bit this morning. Praise God. I believe this morning in order for you to really get what you need from God. You're going to have to be up front with God. And you're going to have to be honest with God. Thank God. And you're going to have to confess. Amen. I got to thinking this morning. Amen. How that. Uh, sometimes our life, amen, is so much in, seems like just scrambled all up. And, amen, we're dealing with situations in our life. And we come to the house of God. And I see folks, amen, that gets a touch from the Lord. But I'm just going to be honest with you, it's not cleared up. Come on. Amen. You got a touch from God, amen, but it's not completely cleared up. Amen. I want to tell you this morning, amen, it's wonderful, 
amen, to get a touch from God, but God's not just wanting you, amen, to partly see or just get, amen, a part deliverance. God's wanting you to be totally made whole. Amen. Thank God. Oh, but it's going to come when you are honest and you confess before God, amen, God, amen, I'm not, amen, I'm not where I need to be. Thank God I'm not, I'm not delivered where I, I need to be. Amen. And when you're honest before God and God sees that, my friend, the Bible said he touched this man the second time. Amen. And when he touched him the second time, thank God the Bible said, amen, he saw every man clearly. Amen. Oh God, would you touch us again, Lord? Amen. That's what we need this morning. Oh, we need God. Amen. To come and, amen, give us that touch that's so desperately needed in our life. Amen. But sometimes we walk around and we're acting like everything's okay, knowing good and well. Amen. Things are not right. Amen, brother, between you and Almighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. My friend, God wants to clear it up this morning. It doesn't matter how the situation looks like it's so difficult. Uh, and sometimes we don't see, amen, no way hardly that we can get delivered from it. Uh, thank God, but my friend, uh, God's able to do whatever you need him to do this morning. It's not the will of God for us today. To go around, amen, with these things in our life, amen, that's awaiting us down and keeping us from having the deliverance that we need in our life. Amen, the Bible teaches us, amen, that brother, when God brings deliverance, amen, brother, he sets you free. Whom the Son has set free, amen, he is free indeed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. When God does a work, my friend, he wants to do it where it is completely amen a brother cleared up thank God God can clear it up this morning I don't know what everybody's are going through what you're facing in this church this morning amen but God can clear it up amen God can fix it in your life you don't have to tote it around every day amen brother if you'll be honest with God and lay it out before the Lord my God is able to bring complete deliverance to your life. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God. I don't understand it. Amen. Uh, how that when God meets with us, let me tell you, that is the most treasured thing. Amen. For God Almighty to come down among us. And I've seen God overshadow some of you in such a special way. Amen, my friend. Thank God. Listen to me. Amen. If you ain't got exactly what you need, thank God. Well, I felt the glory of God. God touched my life. God come among me and help me. But I'm still not completely out. Amen. God wants to clear it all the way up. I felt the Lord deal with me about this to tell somebody this morning. Amen. Oh, thank God. If God comes by and touches you, amen, and the glory of God comes among you, and the God settles upon you, my friend, listen, when God gets done with his work, hallelujah, amen, brother, I believe he does a good work. God does a delivering work. Amen. And if you're not delivered, you need to cry out and say, Oh God, amen, touch me again, Lord. Send it by one more time, God. Hallelujah. Until God does the work completely in your life. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. We are in a, in a time this morning. I believe somebody's already mentioned it, maybe here in the house of God. Amen. Uh, this morning, if the enemy could cause us to be spiritually handicapped, that's what his whole mission and desire is this morning, Brother Tim. He don't want us to have the complete liberty that we need with God Almighty. Hallelujah. He don't mind you getting a little touch here and a little touch over yonder. 
Amen. But you still, amen, are not at your best for God. Amen. You still are not completely, amen, delivered from the situation that's got a hold of your life. Listen to me. Amen. The devil, if he can hold on to a little bit, the brother, he knows he's got an opportunity to cause you to slide all the way back. Amen. Brother, the progress that you have made. Amen. He wants you to lose that progress and go all the way back where you were before. Hey, but if you'll be honest with God, Lord, help me preach right here this morning. Hey, but you don't have to tell the preacher what it is. You don't have to tell the deacon what it is. But if you'll just be honest with God this morning and lay it on the altar and surrender it to God and leave it there, brother, you can leave the house of God with victory in your soul. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, what kind of church could this church be? What kind of people of God could we be? Hallelujah. If we were completely cleared up from all of our situations in life, these problems, amen, that continues to warfare our mind and cause us to be spiritually handicapped on our journey. Amen. Listen to me this morning. I got to preach to you just a moment here today. Hallelujah. I firmly believe with all of my heart. Amen, brother. You know better than anybody else why you are in that place you are in. Hallelujah. You can tell me what you want to, brother. There's some people says, well, I don't know why I'm going through what I'm going through. I don't know why. Amen. I'm facing some of the things. Oh, yes, you do know why. Amen. You and God's done all God knows. He's done revealed it to you. You know what it is. Amen. That's hindering you from being where God wants you to be this morning. God's not going to leave you in the dark today. You hear me if you're a child of God and you're saved this morning. Amen. God's not going to leave you in the dark. You know what it is better than anybody else. Amen. What you're holding on to and you won't let God, amen, let it go and let God clear it up in your life. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I, I'm, I'm feeling like this morning one of the things that I think a lot of folks is dealing with in their Christian walk with God. I'm going to be transparent here with you just a moment here today. Praise God. Amen. It ought to be that when we're dealing with church people, we ought to be dealing with people we can trust and we can put our confidence in. Praise God. But I've been in this thing long enough to know, thank God, even church people are human beings. Come on. Sometimes at the best we can do, not meaning to betray our brother or sister's trust, we fail. We're not perfect. There's sometimes, my friend, hey, amen, when you look at me as a man of God and as a pastor, hey, amen, I'm trying my best to do the best I know how, hey, amen, but sometimes I still, hey, amen, come up a little short. And I think sometimes among the house of God, hey, amen, there's people that sits among us, hey, amen, that won't totally give everything to God, hey, amen, because they got different people on their mind and they don't trust this one over there and they don't trust that one over yonder, hey, amen, and the devil's caused them to build up a wall, hey, amen, brother, that God himself can't hardly get through to. I'm preaching to somebody here this morning. You hear me today. If you can't put your trust in that one and you can't put your trust in that one I have a question for you today. Can you put your trust in God? I said can you put your trust in God? It's not God's fault. Amen. That you've allowed yourself to end up being in the condition you're in for time and time again. The Holy Ghost has stretched out his hand time and time again. The Spirit of God has offered you, amen, a way out to clear things up, amen, but you won't let God, amen, get to that place where he needs to move in your life. Hallelujah. 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 The, that old song says, hallelujah, Lord, amen, 
there's just some rooms I'm not ready for you to walk into. Amen. I'm going to keep the door closed. Amen. There's some things in my heart and there's some rooms in there. Amen. That, Lord, I'm not ready for you, amen, to walk in that room. Hallelujah. Thank God. I want to tell you this morning, amen. God's going to be a God in your life, hallelujah, that has total access to your walk with God and your life. Amen. Or there's going to come a crossroad in your life with you and God that God's going to look at you and he's going to look at you just like he did those disciples and he's going to say, except you forsake all, you cannot be my disciple. Amen. That means forsaken. Amen, brother. That little chip that you got on your shoulder, that means forsaken. Amen. What sister so-and-so said about you, that means forsaken. Amen. Amen, the trust, amen, brother, that you have failed to have in so-and-so. Amen, these little old things sometimes, amen, brother, are building up a wall, amen, between us and God. God's going to tell you, unless you're willing to forsake it all, you cannot be my disciple. Listen to me, unless you're willing to follow God all the way, unless you're willing to let God clear up everything in your walk with God there will come a time my friend you will begin to go backwards instead of forward amen God wants everything amen in our life to be surrendered to him come on glory to God God can clear it up it doesn't matter hallelujah I've had people to tell me through the years brother Andrew uh, you just don't understand me. This is the way I am. This is the way I'm made up. No, amen, listen to me. When it comes to God Almighty, amen, God's not given, amen, to certain personalities. God's not given, amen, to certain, amen, but you, I'm on just going to come on down here. Amen. Listen. Amen. The blood of Jesus don't cater. Amen. Uh, well, let me just put it this way. Praise God. Uh, God, God ain't got no little uh, group over here that he treats one way. And a little group over here that he treats a different way. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, Brother Andrew, God knows exactly how I am. Glory to God. And uh, I've been touched by the Lord. I can see better than I could see. I see men as trees. Amen. But I'm not going, I'm not giving up all of it. I'm still going to hold on to this little bit. Amen. I'm not going to surrender all of it to God. You don't know what you're doing. But I'm going to tell you what you're doing. You're operating out of a spirit of rebellion. Amen, Brother Smith. Hallelujah. That is nothing but your will and your self desires and rebellion that you will not surrender to God. And if that trumpet sounds, amen, and Jesus comes back on the clouds of glory and you're not giving God your all and you're letting your little bit of rebellion and stubborn, amen, hinder you from giving God everything, brother. I'm going to tell you, amen, brother, you're going to be left behind. Hear me today. Amen, I don't care what your crutch is or what your excuse is, brother. Amen, brother, he went all the way to Calvary. Amen, he took the stripes upon his back. Amen, for whatever we're dealing with this morning and all you need is to cry out to God and say Lord touch me again give me deliverance help me oh God to get up from this place where I'm at I've been here too long the Lord's fixing to come where's he going to find you brother you need to get up and run to Jesus amen hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah. Shadadabo, shadadabo, kamanaya.
Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear me this morning. Glory to God. I we sang that song. Amen. As I was listening to it this morning. Amen. Oh, some days there's going to be sunshine. And some days there's going to be rain. And somebody said through the good and through the bad. Hear me today. Amen. I'm I'm the preacher, uh, saying sanctified, got the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. But some days are bad. Uh, some days are not as good as others. Uh, hallelujah. But I'll tell you this morning, uh, it'd be easy uh, just to go over yonder uh, and hang my harp on the willow. Uh, say, I'm not going to preach today. Uh, I'm not going to sing today. Uh, I've got too much going on. Uh, amen. But what if the Lord would come? Uh, where are you going to stand with God Almighty? I'm telling you today you need to let God clear it up whatever it is brother let the Lord wipe it out amen glory to God glory to God glory to God my heart is so uplifted and amen encouraged when I see people that's been in a struggle and in a battle and all of a sudden, sometimes undeserving, yes, we are. But all of a sudden, the glory of God, the love of God, the mercies of God just come by. Oh, hallelujah. Hey, better when I see God touch them, you know what it does? It lifts me up. Oh, God, they're fixing to get some help, Lord. They're fixing to mount back up. They're fixing to get back up where they one time was with God. My heart is so uplifted. I'm looking. I've been praying. I've been patiently waiting. I've been asking God. Lord, put them back where they were. God, give them that fire. Rekindle that back in their soul again. Hallelujah. And when I see God, hear me. When I see God doing everything possibly that he can do. Come by and touch you when you don't even deserve it. Amen. Come by and lift you up and give you help. Amen. My friend, you hear me? me this morning. Amen. If you don't let God, amen, do the work that needs to be done and let God clear it out. Amen. Hear me this morning. You'll slide right back where you were before. Amen. During our revival, I didn't tell them preachers not one thing about my church. No, sir, brother, I did not. God in heaven knows I'll face all my God. All I asked them to do was come and preach. Now I'm telling you what, one preached on being deceived. One preached on, hey, but it's no game. Anybody remember? It's not no game. We're not playing no game. When God of heaven comes by and moves upon your soul. Amen. And, and God, listen to me. Hey, but God looked at that man and said, Now I just touched your eyes. Hey, but how do you see? Oh, glory. What if that man would have said, Well, Lord, thank you. I appreciate it. Hey, but, and he just saw me. No, sir, he didn't. He confessed to God. Hear me this morning. Some of you are in the places that you are. Amen. And I'm going to preach to you because I'm your pastor. You're in the places you are this morning. Amen. Because you won't confess. Amen. Be honest and upfront with Almighty God. Amen. Sometimes we, we tell people, said, I'm one of them. Amen. That harbors things. I hold it in. You can hold it in all you want to, but there's an all seeing eye. Amen. My friend, he looks right down and he sees everything that's inside. You think you've got it covered up and wrapped up pretty good. Amen. But hear me. Amen. Brother, God asked that man that question. Listen, I've got to preach to you just a minute. Uh, amen. I, I just believe uh, that there was enough power uh, in the touch of Jesus' hand uh, that Jesus could have healed him and cleared it up the first time he touched him. I believe it, brother. I read in the Word of God where Jesus went in the house where that woman was laying on that bed. My Lord, and he touched her. And she come up from that bed healed. Amen. Just one touch of the Lord. Amen. But I just believe, just like God, amen, 
God come down in the cool of the day where Adam was. Come on. And he said, where art thou? I'm preaching to you just a little bit here this morning. Where art thou? God knew where they were. Hallelujah. He already knew what had happened. Amen. God knew this man wasn't completely, his eyes wasn't completely made whole. But God wanted to see if this man was going to confess. God said, where art thou, Adam? Amen. And Adam come out there and said, we hid ourselves because we were naked. And the Lord said, how did thou know that thou was naked? Did you go and eat of that forbidden fruit off of that tree that I told you the day you eat it, you're going to die? Hallelujah. And right there in that old heart of that human being, amen, he looked and he said, it was that woman that you gave me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Instead of just being up front with God. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Listen to me. Amen. When you begin to go in the wrong direction. Amen. Going against the will of God. Amen. That preacher preached on being deceived. The devil will deceive you. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen to me. If there's anything. Amen. That to me. That makes God angry. Amen. It is for you to lie to almighty God. Amen. Because when you lie to God, you're might as well saying, God, you don't even know. Amen. What I am or what I'm going. Listen to me. Amen. Brother, when God asks you a question, it ain't because God don't know already. When God asks you a question, brother, he's wanting you to see. He's going to see whether you're going to confess, whether you're going to be honest with God Almighty. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother, I believe you can come out of that this morning if you just confess you'll just be honest brother God can pull you out and you can leave this church different than the way you came come on hallelujah hallelujah I wonder brother Chris amen I got preached to you I wonder if their punishment would not have been as severe as it was Adam if he did just been up front with God Almighty and been honest with him. But he tried to pull the wool and be deceptive and say, it's that woman that you gave me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know why people can't get through to God where they need to get through with? They think they're coming down here at the bargaining table with God. God don't run no bargain table. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to just come on up here and just lay it out before the Lord. Amen. It is what it is, Almighty God. Amen. Sometimes I'm saved, sanctified, and got the Holy Ghost. And sometimes I'm pure ashamed. Amen. Of what I have to lay out before God Almighty. Amen. But there ain't no use in me covering it up. Amen. I might as well just go ahead. Amen. Lay it out before God. Be honest with God. Amen. The God of heaven. Amen. Brother will have mercy upon my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's some things I've had to lay out before God. Amen that my wife don't know, that my children don't know, that my church family don't know. Amen. But when I come clean with God and I laid it out there before the Lord, amen, listen to me. Amen. God came down there, brother. Amen. Brother restored and gave me what I needed. He cleared out the way, brother. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. You hear me this morning. I wouldn't be able to preach to you like I'm preaching today if it hadn't been for God. God Almighty, uh, he may clearing it up, brother. Uh, amen. But I'm so glad. Uh, amen, brother. When I confess to God uh, that God come down there, brother. Uh, amen. And he made a way uh, and he cleared it up. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There's some of you that I've pastored now for 16 years. Now you, if you haven't found it out by now, you will. Holy to God. I see folks as they're going through things and they come to church and they're not their self. You can tell. They're there. But that's it. 
They're not themselves. And you know what, sister? I wouldn't do this if I didn't feel like this is the way God's told me to operate. But I don't go stick my nose in everybody's business. Every time I see somebody, they ain't, they're there, but they ain't there. I don't go to them and say, what's wrong? Why? I got enough stuff to deal with. You know what's wrong better than anybody else knows what's wrong. And it don't make me no difference. Amen. Listen to me. Amen. If I know everybody's trouble in the church, there ain't a thing I could do about it except pray. Amen. But I want to tell you what. Amen. When you get in the presence of Almighty God and the glory of God comes down among us. Hallelujah. Amen. The Spirit of God gets to moving. Amen. And you sit there. Amen. And you don't say, God, touch me, Lord. Touch me, Lord. The preacher can't do it, but you can do it, God. Touch me, Jesus. Amen. The deacon can't do it, but you can do it. We're in the presence of God. Touch me, Lord. Amen. But no. Amen. We're carrying it. Service after service. Amen. Month after month. And we come to the house of God. And the Holy Ghost comes among us. And God wants to clear it up. But we leave the same way we came. I want to tell you. Amen. Brother, you're going to have to surrender to God. You're going to have to say, God, here I am. Touch me, dear Lord. Lord to God. Lord to God. Amen. Hear me this morning. If I bust your bubble, it ain't because I don't love you. Oh, glory to God. And I'm going to be honest with you. When the Holy Ghost comes out, I remember reading in the scripture where there was a famine in the land. And the prophet of God was passing by on the wall. Anybody remember that? There's a famine in the land. And they got to crying out to the prophet of God. Amen. We need help. We need help. And you know what the prophet, read it for yourself, what the prophet told him. Amen. said, Amen. said, uh, you got to have to cry out to God. He's the only one. I can't do it. He's the only one that can help you. Amen. There's a famine in the land. You better cry out to God. He's the only one that can help you. Glory to God. Hear me this morning. Hear me this morning. Amen. As, as I said, I'm, I'm, I'm your friend. I love you. I wouldn't hurt you for nothing in the world. Praise God. But you hear me this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. I believe that there's some people, amen, they're carrying something because they want to carry it. Say amen or oh me. They're carrying things because they're too rebellious to let it go. They're carrying things because, amen, brother, that's, that's in their heart and they're not willing to surrender to God. Tell me what you want to, brother. When the Holy Ghost comes and the power of God comes and you don't cry out, God touch me, and you leave the same way you come time and time again, something's wrong, my friend. Come on. I don't mean to be ugly, but I ain't got time to pacify a rebellious and stubborn spirit. I'm going to preach to you. Amen, brother. And if you don't cry out to God, that's going to be between you and Almighty God. I've cleaned my hands. And I'm telling you this morning, amen, this man confessed before God and said, I see men as trees. God said, that won't work. If i got to do it again, I'll touch you again. And he reached out and he touched it one more time and it cleared it up brother you don't tell me God will go the extra mile God will do whatever it takes to bring deliverance to your life but you're going to have to want it my friend hold up, oh, shut that up oh, you're going to have to desire it you're going to have to want it glory to God hallelujah it's not going to happen with just some magic button. Walking along somewhere and God's just going to all of a sudden deliver you out of it. No, there's a part you're going to have to do. Hear me this morning. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. As I'm getting ready to come to a close here today. Glory to God. When I come to the house of the Lord, sometimes I'm carrying things. I've dealt with things. 
I feel the load of things. Help me. But when I shake your hand, I'm going to treat you and smile and love you and treat you just like I do if I'm a caring. Why? Amen. Because, amen. I've trusted God Almighty. Even though my situation hasn't changed, I'm trusting God Almighty. Sister Mayoni, you didn't do it to me. Sister Janice, you didn't do it to me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. And you know what? I might get so down. Hey, but when I get in that altar, glory to God. Hallelujah. I might, I might get to praying and look around there and there's Sister Alice. Lord, touch him again, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Help me. Amen. But listen. Amen. I'm going through something. I can't even hardly shake your hand. I can't hardly even smile. I can't hardly, amen, amen, talk to nobody. I'm going through this situation. Praise God. They ain't done you no harm. I'm going to tell you what your problem is. Uh, thank God you're selfish. Amen. And all you can think about is yourself. Hear me this morning. Uh, I'm going to tell you, my friend, uh, you're going to need your brother. And you're going to need your sister. Find all the thoughts you want to. Uh, but that ain't nothing but the devil. Uh, thank God when you need help. Uh, they're going to get around you in the altar and they're going to lay hands on you and pray for you and help bring you out of it. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. I'm not belittling the fact that we don't face things. Yes, we do. We face them. Glory to God. Amen. But we got a place to go and a source to go to to help us through it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I've been standing in the church. Hallelujah. Amen. I stand at the back door one Sunday. It's been several years ago now. Hallelujah. And I stuck my hand out to the sister to shake her hand like I always do on Sunday mornings. Hallelujah. She just brushed right by me, wouldn't shake my hand, just shaking her head like this. Went on down. Holy God. Hallelujah. I hadn't done a thing to her that I know of. Hallelujah. Amen. I bought us a little pool and put over there behind the parsonage. Amen. For my little children to get in and swim in the little pool. Amen. And we wore our clothes. We didn't get in there half naked. Amen. But somehow or another she caught glimpse of that little pool that I had in the backyard. Amen. And when she come in, she couldn't even shake my hand. Just went right on by me, wouldn't shake my hand. And I asked the next lady that come in uh, that rode the car with her. I said, what in the world is wrong with that sister? She said she saw your pool in the backyard and she didn't like it. And she said, I didn't like it either. But you know what I done? I crawled up in that pool pit that Sunday morning and I preached just like she ain't never went by me. Glory to God. Help me, help me, help me. Praise God forever. Amen. You can't let the devil Amen. take every bit of your victory and your joy. Hallelujah. Amen. You know what I done? Amen. I took that little pool. Hey, Amen, brother, and I took an axe to it and I cut it up and my little children didn't have nothing else to swim in. But I'm going to tell the devil this morning I'm still preaching the gospel. I'm still standing for the truth. Hey, Amen. I'm not going to let the devil knock me out of the glory of Almighty God. Ah, God help us this morning. Brother, if we're going to make this journey, we're going to have to get a backbone uh, that we won't let the devil shake us. Amen. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Oh glory. Whether you agree with it a pool or you don't agree with it, I ain't going to let that keep me from keeping the victory. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. The little young and said, Daddy, you ain't going to get rid of our pool. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I ain't going to let the devil keep me from keeping the victory. Come on. I'm coming to a close. I got to preach to you a minute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My son sitting back there. Glory to God, he won't play football. Well, I was raised up not to play football. Glory to God. He's reaching an age. And I got to thinking about it. I said, well, I guess playing football is better than out there on drugs. 
out there smoking cigarettes and going to the places of the world. Hallelujah. Amen. But all I could think about was if I let my boy play football, what they're going to say about the preacher. Glory to God. And uh, so I, uh, I set my boy down and I talked to him. I, I wouldn't let him play football for a long time. And he, he wanted to play football. And I sat down and I talked to him. I said, son, I'm going to make a deal with you. I said, I'm going to let you play football. And I'm going to give in your direction and let you play football. I said, but you're going to have to. If I'm going to give to you and let you play, you're going to have to give to daddy and understand. I said, I pastor a church and I pastor people who don't believe in it. And I said, if I go to your football games, it's going to be talked about my ministry. And I said, I'm going to let you play if you understand why I'm not going. And he just, I believe he's got one more game and all of it will be over. And I haven't been one time to his football game. Amen. But you know what? Glory to God. I've still had people out of state tell Brother Andrew has let his son play football where he could get a scholarship and go to go to college and play football. The last thing I had in my mind, glory to God, I done it because, hallelujah, I want my son. Amen, I'm trying my best. I don't want him to go the wrong direction. Glory to God. Amen. And you know what? Everywhere you go, amen, it looks like there's a struggle and a battle any way you go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And you know sometimes the devil says, amen, you know, pastoring, preaching is more than what you really need to be involved in. Amen. You got this and saying this and that one saying that. But I'm going to tell you, it's come too late. Amen. To let the devil, amen, come in between what God has given me. Hear me this morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God they can say whatever they want to say all over the country that they want to say. Glory to God. But God knows right down in my heart how I feel. Amen. And what I believe and what I preach. I want to see my boy. Amen. Brother doing good. I want to see him do good. Hallelujah. Oh, amen. Thank God. Uh, he lost his game the other night. Brother Nathaniel, you don't mind me saying this. He lost his game the other night and I found out about it. I don't go. I said, son, even though daddy didn't go to your game, I said, sometimes you lose. I said, but you're never defeated. Thank God in the name of Jesus. Thank God daddy loves you, son. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. But what God gave me, Thank God I'm not going to let the devil come along and steal it away from me. Hallelujah. Oh, it's a fight to the finish. Amen. To stay in there, saints of God. The Lord will help us. Some things we can't see clear right now. But if we'll say, Lord, touch me again, God, and let the Lord just clear it up. Oh, hallelujah. 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 I'm going to be honest with you till we touch the streets of gold. I'm preaching way too long this morning, but I feel, I feel like preaching. Amen. Until we touch the streets of gold. Amen. We won't never understand it all. But the song said, we'll understand it better by and by. Hold fast, my friend, and hold to God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I thought to myself, amen, wouldn't shake my hand, just went right on by me. Glory to God. You got some of them in the church. We got some in our church. I'm preaching to you now. Glory to God. I had a sinner call me just this past week. And they told me, they said, Brother Andrew, said, somebody come to me in the church and said something hurt my feelings. Said, I'm ashamed almost to go to church. I said, don't you let nobody cause you to be ashamed to come to the house of God. 
Don't you fall out with me. But while I'm trying to get people in church, some of church people that don't have no wisdom is a running them off. The whole time I'm trying to bring them in the house of God, somebody go to somebody and say something and run them away from the house of God. Hear me this morning. We got them in the church. Hey, baby, but you know what I told one of them? I said, young lady, I said, my woman, I said, you hear me. She got to crying. She said, Mount Zion's my church. She said, I love Mount Zion. I said, you listen to me. I said, Artemis Cummins was your grandpa just as much as he was their grandpa. I said, that church is your church just as much as it is their church. And don't you let nobody, amen, run you away from the house of God. It don't matter what they say, brother. Square your shoulders back. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm telling you from here on out, if you don't have a determination, you can't let nobody nor nothing separate you from God. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You got them kind in church. Amen. They got their nose in everybody else's business but their own. Come on. Hey, you got them kind in church. Amen. But what are you going to do? You're going to run the wrong way? You're going to quit church? You're going to fall out with the church? No, sir. Amen. I'm going to come right back to the house of God. I'm going to go right back to the altar. I'm going to get right back under the glory of God. It don't matter what everybody else thinks or does. I want God to touch me one more time. Amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank God, God can clear it up. Amen. There's some people in the house of God right here this morning. Amen, you've been dealing with things and the preacher ain't come to stick his nose in your business. Because you know why? I can't clear it up. Everything that could be said has done been said to some of you. I couldn't tell you anything you ain't already heard. I'm going to tell you if you could get under where God is. And you could go to crying out God. I want you to clear it up for me. I want to tell you God can clear it up. Standing all over this church this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. How do you see? I can't see quite clear yet. Amen. I don't, I don't see quite clear yet. Amen. As long as you'll confess it. As long as you'll cry out to God. When Jesus come along there, he asked him a question. Wilt. Thou be made whole. That man said, Lord, every time the water's troubled, somebody else gets in before me. He told the Lord what his trouble was. And the Lord said, that's all right. Hallelujah. He said, wilt thou be made whole? And from that moment... When Jesus touched him, he was made whole. Just be up front with God this morning. Be honest with God today. And watch God come and clear it up for you. Hallelujah. Saints is coming to the altar this morning. Where are you at today? Hey, but are you dealing with some things you need God to clear up? Come on and be honest with him. Hey, but confess to God. Let God do it for you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God. Come on, yes, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah, find your place. blind to Jesus side touch me now I pray 
so Jesus led him down out of town and touched his eyes that day. He said, I see men as trees walking. Jesus touched him once again.
that crab into their lives with faith. Oh, but someone sent a message, and so Jesus, he did reply. And death could have no power when Jesus passes by. Oh, it always makes a difference when Jesus passes by. The devil trembles, the enemy flees when Jesus he comes on the scene. Oh, he always shines the ray of light when darkening clouds must fly. Always makes a difference when Jesus passes by.
knows how you're hurting. He understands just how your heart has been broken into. He's the God of the stars, the sun and the moon. Oh, and he is your father. You calm the storm, so and he'll find a way just to fix it for you. Oh, and he'll do it again. Oh, he'll do it again. Oh, just take a look at where you are now, where you have been. And hasn't he?
And the word of the Lord said, and he saw clearly. When Jesus does a work, my friend, it's an awesome work. This man got the second touch from the Lord. And I've had to go back many times and get that second touch. And I want to tell you what, when you get it, it's sufficient. Amen? It's sufficient. I appreciate the goodness of God this morning. I refuse to believe that God can't clear it up. It don't matter what it is. God can clear it up. Amen? God knows how to fix it. That's right. Amen. He's he's a mighty God. Amen. Appreciate you this morning for being in the house of the Lord. I trust the word of God has went out this morning and touched your heart and life. We don't have long before Jesus comes. And I want to encourage everybody this morning. Let Jesus do what needs to be done. Amen. Praise the Lord. Wonder if there's a word before we come to a close this morning. Church, you hear what Brother Ray said. Let's gather around him this morning. Let's have a word of prayer.